Hello, I am Seema and welcome to part 11 of the chapter Chemical Kinetics. I am now going to tell you about pseudo first order reactions. What does pseudo mean? Do you remember you had studied in one of your junior classes about amoeba and we said that amoeba does not have feet of, of its own and it seems to have false feet or the body itself takes the shape of feet and then it walks on those false feet. And these false feet were given the name of pseudopodia, where podia meant feet and pseudo meant false. So when you say pseudo means false. So when you say pseudo first order reaction, it means it's a reaction which is pretending to be a first order reaction. It might not actually be a first order reaction, but it only it, it appears to be a first order reaction. So we call it a pseudo first order reaction. In, under what conditions does the reaction act as a pseudo first order reaction? Or it may be of another order, but it appears to be of the first order. That is when one of the reactants is present in such a large quantity that if you change a little bit of its concentration or even during the course of the reaction, when the entire reaction takes place, that reactant, the change in the concentration of that reactant is so less that it really does not affect the rate of the reaction. So it is said to be a pseudo first order reaction. That particular reactant is not contributing towards the rate of the reaction. So, or rather the concentration of that reactant is of course contributing towards the reaction, but its quantity is not affecting the rate of the reaction because it is present in excess. So how do you define this? The order of a reaction is sometimes altered by the conditions. And that is when the conditions are such that one of the reactants is present in excess. So one such example is the hydrolysis of esters. In the hydrolysis of esters, you have here ethyl acetate. And ethyl acetate on being hydrolyzed in water, it gives you acetic acid and ethanol. Now, if you see the water present here is present in really large quantity. And since it is present in really large quantity, the change in concentration of water as a reactant does not really affect the rate of the reaction. So let us see, at time t is equal to zero, that is initially, the concentration of sodium, sorry, uh, ethyl acetate was 0 0.01 mole and water was 10 moles, 0 0.01 mole and 10 moles. There's a large difference in the quantity. And when the reaction proceeded, now when all of the ethyl acetate was used up, you were left with only zero moles after time t, let us say. At that time, the concentration of water was only 9.9, was 9.9 .9 moles. So out of 10 moles, only 0.1 mole was used. 9.9 .9 moles is still remaining. So the presence of water is not going to affect, it is not going to limit or slow down the reaction. So we say that water does not affect the rate, therefore it does not, it is not contributing towards the order of the reaction. After all, what is the order of the reaction? The order of the reaction is the concentrations of reactants and to which powers should, be, should they be raised so that you know how they are affecting the rate of the reaction. So at this time, when all of the ethyl acetate has been used up, you are, le you are left with what? The products, that is, if you had 0 0.01 mole of ethyl acetate, you get 0 0.01 mole of acetic acid and you get 0 0.01 mole of ethanol. So all of the reactant was used up and the water, the reactant water did not affect the rate of the reaction. Therefore, it appears to be a first order reaction because the only concentration, the rate only depends on the concentration of ethyl acetate and not on water. So how do you express the rate of such a reaction? We say the rate of a reaction is the rate constant K, but we put a dash here. I'll explain why. K dash, it's nothing but K, it is the rate constant into the concentrations of both the reactants. So the concentration of ethyl acetate and water. But water does not really affect the rate of reaction. Therefore, the concentration of water, you may say, is nearly constant. Since it is also constant, then K dash into the concentration of water could be called the rate constant K. 
So we say that since water, the concentration of water is constant here, therefore K becomes equal to K dash into the concentration of water. Therefore, the rate now, rate, what is the rate equation? Rate is equal to K into concentration of the reactant on which the rate depends and that reactant is ethyl acetate. And what is K? K actually is K dash into water. So this is, this should have been a second order reaction, but it appears to be a first order reaction. Therefore, we call it a pseudo first order reaction. Another example of a pseudo first order reaction would be the inversion of cane sugar. We know cane sugar on reaction with water gets dissociated and breaks down into two uh, sugar molecules. And what are these molecules? Glucose and fructose. They are simpler sugars. So it forms glucose and fructose and sugar cane that is C12 H22O11 on reaction with water in the in acidic medium gives you C6H12O6 and C6H12O6. They have the same formula. Only the structures are different. So one of them is glucose and the other is fructose. And if you had to express the rate of uh, this reaction for cane sugar for a pseudo first order reaction, rate would be equal to K into the concentration of sugar and not that of water. And what would K be? K, just like this reaction here, would also be equal to K dash into the concentration of water. Right? So since this is also constant, we add it to K and we say it is this is K. So K is actually equal to K dash into the concentration of that reactant whose, uh, whose concentration is so high that its change does not affect the rate of the reaction. So this was pseudo first order reaction. Now there is one solved example in your textbook. And when I explain this to you, you would understand this, how to use these formulae better. So I'm going to explain this example to you. The question is that hydrolysis of methyl acetate, which is an ester, in aqueous solution has been studied by titrating the liberated acetic acid against sodium hydroxide. When this reaction, the, uh, what, uh, the hydrolysis of ester takes place, the acid that is given out is acetic acid which is titrated against sodium hydroxide at different times and the readings are taken at different times. From the concentration of the acetic acid which is present at different times, you can know how much of the sodium methyl acetate would be remaining. So we, through titration, we know the amount of acetic acid, the concentration of acetic acid and from that we find out how much of uh, methyl acetate may have been used. And therefore, what is the concentration of methyl acetate? Because when we are talking of the rate, we are not interested in the concentration of the product. We are interested in the concentration of the reactant. So we just deduce the value, the concentration of the uh, reactant that is methyl acetate from it. So the solution has been studied by titrating the liberated acetic acid against sodium hydroxide and the concentration of the ester at different times is given. So from that, the concentration of the ester is given and this is the table that what, how, what is the concentration of the ester that is methyl acetate, the reactant. So we find at time t in minutes, that is 0 minute, 30 minutes, 60 minutes and 90 minutes, the different readings were done. And the concentration of ester, that is methyl acetate at these times was 0 0.8500, 0 0.8004, blah, 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 whatever the numbers are. So what are you supposed to show? You have to show that it follows pseudo first order reaction as the concentration of water remains nearly constant. Now he's telling you that the concentration of water is 55 moles per liter. And what is the concentration of methyl acetate? 0 0.8 is not even one mole per liter. So in comparison to that, water is 55 moles per liter. Just by looking at it theoretically, you would know, I mean, if you just looked at the concentration, you could guess that this would be a pseudo first order reaction. Yet from this data, we are supposed to prove this. So how do we do it? During the course of the reaction, the concentration of water remains 55 moles per liter. What is the value of K dash in this equation? And what do we know? What is K dash? K dash is K is actually equal to K dash into the concentration of water. So we know from this equation the rate rate is given at equal to is equal to K dash into CH3COOCH3 into H2O. So 
we will first calculate the value of k at different uh, concentrations or using these different readings and then from k we will be able to calculate the value of k dash if k which is a constant you know k is uh, the rate constant so at different readings when you find out the value of k if the value of k comes out to be the same then it means that it is a pseudo first order reaction let me just explain i'll write down the solution and then explain it to you give me a moment to write it down all right i'm ready with the solution so we have been asked to find out the value of k dash for this reaction assuming that it's a pseudo first order reaction but first we must find out the value of k we know the value of k for a first order reaction is equal to 2.303 upon t log the concentration of the reactant at time equal to 0 and concentration of reactant at the time equal to t using this formula we know and we know here that we already know if it is a pseudo first order reaction then k should be equal to k dash into water the concentration of water now we have the concentration of the methyl acetate which is given to us so this is the same table that was written this way i've written it down uh, vertically now so you have the different readings that is at time zero at time 30 minutes at 60 minutes and 90 minutes these were the concentrations of the reactant right that is these uh, the concentration c0 is 0 0.8500 and these are three different readings at three different times that is 30 minutes 60 minutes and 90 minutes now we can find out the value of k the rate constant at any time that is for 30 minutes 60 minutes and 90 minutes how for 30 minutes what will we do if we want to calculate the value of k for 30 minutes we'll write it is 2.303 upon t that is 30 log c0 is 8500 upon c is in this case is 8004 and when you solve this, the value of k that you get will be equal to 2.004 into 10 to the power minus 3. Now for time t is equal to 60 minutes, we will again solve the find out the value of k with the same formula. For this, we will again put k is equal to 2.303 upon 60 log c0 is 8500 and c this time is 7538. And when you solve this, you again get the value of k in per minute, the unit is per minute, is 2.002 into 10 to the power minus 3, which is um, to one, one thousandth time uh, by 0 0.2, is it, less. So, it is, it, the difference is very little. It is approximately the same. Now, for the third time, at 90 minutes, we again find out the value of k. So this time we'll again write 2.303 upon t uh, and t is 90 log of c0 is 8500 upon 0 0.7096 and now when you solve it you again get a reading is 2.005 into 10 to the power minus 3. What do we notice from this? That from all the values of k if you really look 2.00 till the second place of decimal they are all the same into 10 to the power minus 3 it is only at third place of decimal that you may see a little difference a little error that could be a little error in your measurements during titration also so they are approximately the same which shows that this value is constant and k should be constant if k is constant then definitely this is a first order reaction so if it is a first order reaction, we know it has two reactants. It has the methyl acetate and it has water. So if using the concentration of methyl acetate, we are getting a constant value of K, it means the concentration of water is constant, which of course in the question they already told us that the concentration of water almost remains the same, which is 55 moles per liter. Now, out of these three readings, which you got, you will, one is... 2.002004 and 005 so we'll use the average one the one in the middle 2.004 is in the middle 0.2 is less than this and 0.5 is more than this so we will choose this to be our correct reading just assuming it to a little approximation till the third place of decimal so we take this as the value of k so we say so according to this data k is equal to 2.004 into 10 to the power minus 3 per minute and we already know that what is k? k is nothing but k dash into the concentration of water. And the concentration of water is given to us which is 55 moles per liter. 
So we will substitute the value of 55 moles per liter and the value of K that we have chosen is 2.004 into 10 to the power minus 3 per minute. Now from this you get 55 moles per liter is equal to 2.004 into you get this equation. From this you can calculate K dash. Therefore K dash would be equal to 2.004 into 10 to the power minus 3 per minute upon 55 moles per liter. And when you numerically solve this value mathematically, you get 3.64 into 10 to the power minus 5. And the units would be, you will get mole inverse liter. When it comes up, it will be liter and minute inverse is already there. So mole inverse liter per minute will be the unit of the value of K dash. Right? Now, look at this. How just from the uh, question itself, you can understand that if you are getting a constant value for K, if you're getting K, it means this reaction is behaving as a first order reaction. So since it is behaving as a first order reaction, although it has two reactants, we would call it a pseudo first order reaction. So with that, I finished pseudo first order reactions. And in the next video, there are two in-text questions that I'll be solving before proceeding to the next topic. So with this, I'll wind up today's video. If you found it helpful, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, recommend it to your friends and please keep returning for more videos in chemistry. Thank you for watching and bye-bye for now.